We can't be there physically, Xavier, but we are there. Hello, Pietro. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually connecting from the street just to give you a feel of, uh, you know, the Geneva Watch Days. You can see over there the, uh, uh, the tents and uh, the different hotels which are on the lake. That's and, fantastic. Uh, going to the Beau Rivage where a lot of things are, are happening. Um, I remember during the, the, the first wave of the COVID, I was also filming outside to tell people what's going on. So here you see the, uh, uh, the inside of the uh, Beau Rivage where you have... Oh, first, first information, Chapek, if you are in Switzerland, if you're lucky enough to be in Switzerland and in Geneva, you can go and see Chapek at the Beau Rivage uh, in Geneva to, to discover the new collections yeah. and what's happening with the brand. And the event just started today. You can see some of uh, the team of World Tempus and other brands. Very uh, good. Very good. Are looking at me like, okay. What's Suzanne? What's Suzanne there? The middle of everyone is, 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 is live recording. We're going <laughs> upstairs. That's brilliant. I like this. I like this. So how many brands are at the Beau Rivage with you at the moment? I think we are about 10 brands. 10 brands all at the uh, Beau Rivage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Max, the, Max is at the top, uh, the yeah. Betune, Chardin number two, Beauvais, and then here is Chapek. With, uh, so that's the little stand uh, that is inside a nice little room that we have. The team is over there <laughs> on the terrace. A few journalists are watching the beauties. And you see outside the lake with a beautiful uh, geyser. Welcome to Geneva. Thank you. And let's get started. Thank you. It, it really much. feels like it really feels like we are there. And as you know, we were planned to be there, but of course, the restrictions happening at the moment didn't uh, didn't allow allow us to. But uh, we didn't give up, and we decided to have a live a live call to be able to meet you alive, so you can talk us through what's what's happening with uh, with Chapek. It's uh, crazy days. Eh? I've seen a release yesterday. I know yeah. there is a release today. Uh, so a lot going on. It's uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, the, uh, with the COVID, to get the same output, you need to work twice more yeah. than usually. Already you work a lot, so it's a, it's a never-ending story because we we have a lot of uh, different partners that are working part time. Sometimes some of them are closed or they just work in the morning. Some are working full speed. Uh, so there is a lesson to learn from from crisis. How do you manage crisis or not? We're working. Full speed, uh, we never stopped at any moment. Yeah. And uh, we prepared these watches, keeping them, you know, for the moment we would release them. So uh, the dark matter is the, the first one we're going we're gonna to present. Hope, hopefully, if you can get it, Chloe. Uh, listen, that was the release. Listen, of, Xavier, of... if I can ask you, first of all, uh, the Geneva Watch Days was a very ambitious and very uh, uh, brave um, decision to make all together to go back on track with the physical events that are so important for our industry and uh -huh. this was planned of, of course five five months ago when nobody knew how things would have pan out and uh, so do you still think it was a it was a good idea do you still feel that there is a good buzz around the exhibition how are you living it so far on the first day look uh, uh, all the all the people I've met around are very excited um, it's, it's been organized. As you have seen, every brand is in a different room. So right now, in this moment, in the, in the Chapek booth, if you want, in the Chapek uh, uh, suite, uh, yeah. we, are, like we are three from the team, four with me, and then uh, three guests. So it's, it's, it's done in a very safe environment. There is, uh, there is you know... Uh, alcohol everywhere and everything so so really things are done in a way that you you don't take a risk and suddenly people are thinking yeah great you know yeah. we can finally uh do enjoy watches uh, enjoy our passion in a safe environment and in a very one-to-one -one. and we love one-to-one -one. actually we prefer to have a smaller event uh with quality people uh with quality time than to get to a, a big audience yeah, so, because you collect, yeah. you collect rare people, don't you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so it's all about rarity in the, good, in the good meaning of that term. And it's all about uh, the quality time that you will have. Fantastic. So uh, when, 
we 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 were not in the founding members of the of the Geneva Days, but one of the Max actually contacted me. Um, I think it was end of June, beginning of July, and uh, said to me, oh, "Why don't you join? You know, uh, you got nice things to show. Uh, come on!" And we said, "Yeah, sure. I mean, that's a great idea." And we didn't know how things would evolve, but more and more, I realized that it's the right way to do things. We get together uh, in a nice way. And uh, we are able to, you know, make people feel. And there are quite a lot of people in the in the hotel coming in now, even though it's supposed to really start this afternoon. So it and shows the um, interest and the excitement. It's really, it's also suggesting this could really be a platform for the future in a year where we've seen uh, Baselworld crumbling down and nothing to do with COVID. Uh, just Baselworld is obviously no more. And SIHH and um, Watches and Won becoming Watches and Wonders, but only as a virtual event. And now, of course, the, uh, how can I say, the, the Fabian Lupo resigning, um, you know, there are a few question marks related to Watches and Wonders as well for next year. So maybe Geneva Watch Days is really a platform that at the end of the summer could be really something, something nice to happen for the future years. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, not, and there are more questions also regarding next year. Because... Um, Without revealing it, uh, we've been hearing so many things, so many yeah. contradictory elements regarding this uh, uh, this event. Um, we think this format maybe works better for brands like us, and and you know we ask also ourselves questions when you when you spend uh, uh, seventy thousand dollar in an event to get something, and then you do only only live. Uh, with Pietro and then a little <laughs> bit of advertising on Facebook and then a nice website and you spend 20,000 you achieve more. So That's I true. think for us as brand, we, we think there is sometimes too much money wasted uh, just to look like, uh, you know, the nicest, you know. So this kind of, you know, uh, uh, let me allow the term, you know, uh, penis, penis length war is a bit uh, counterproductive. Yeah, we think no, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the world, people are still thinking, did he say it or not? You know? <laughs> so yeah. we, but it's, uh, we, the world we think, is... We, yeah, we, we think we should, we should uh, invest our money to receive well people and, and share what we have done, show it very nicely, very properly. Uh, but it shouldn't be a, a competition on who is spending most because this is totally, uh, totally counterproductive. We're not here for marketing. <laughs> We're, if we're, you, we're if you think what? about it, Xavier, it probably, it's probably a vision that belongs to the past because we've seen in the last six months where we were forced to build that human relationship with the final clients and be really after every single client. That's, that is, especially in independent watchmaking, that is what collectors are looking for. They're looking for cutting all the BS and being in touch with, with the brand or people like us that are a little bit the ambassador mm -hmm. Of, of the brands and talk about the real things, talk about in-house movements, talk about, you know, exceptional materials, exceptional techniques, uh, limited numbers of production. This is what is winning at the moment. Absolutely. So let's dig into what people love because I don't know how much time we have. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, ask... Uh, oh, I was just yeah. going to say, Xavier, 2020 has been a heck of a year for Chapek, you know, from the... Yeah. Successful launch of the Antarctique, the new in-house uh, manufacture movement that went with it. And now, uh, of course, we've seen a new Faubourg de Cracovie launched a few weeks back. And yes. now we're going very strong with a new tourbillon. And you will tell us uh, what else uh, after that. Exactly. So I'm going, uh, we, we have taken, uh, uh, I thought, let me change the camera one second. So, okay, here is Pierre. Is this our new stagiaire? for design. Nice uh, to see you. A nice little uh, 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 girl, lady, uh, very good at designing. And she's now going to film so that I can use my hands and show you the piece at the same time. Very good. Uh, so here is the uh, uh, Place Vendôme Dark Matter. Peut-être peux-tu sortir la, la Place Vendôme normale, celle-ci derrière, peut-être. And so that's the latest release we have done. Um, two days ago. Uh, it's the last of the Place Vendôme edition and it's the most exciting, I think, uh, because it was, it's the most extreme. 
uh, we've gone from uh, a classic modern look to modernizing, modernizing, modernizing the look till getting to, to, to this piece. It's also one of my favorite because of the way it was born. It was actually born as much as from two friends who are customers and from us. So it's not a only Chapek birth. It's born from a small collection of six watches uh, in very bright colors, orange, purple, blue, uh, green. And we created a, one of each color and then we saw it for their friends, okay? So it's a six uh, watch collection that was created for, for six uh, happy guys who are friends of, of, of these two guys. And we thought, okay, we have to keep the seventh color, the black for ourselves. So that's the way it was born. Let me, let me bring you back for a second to the original piece, which was this one. Uh, yes. That's uh, Plasmodum Titanium, uh, Platinum, sorry with uh, uh, enamel grand feu dial and the 60 second tourbillon and the, and the second time zone and the gmt you have, yeah you have these two these two bridges with a very nice shape very sharp shape that are here to remind the the bridges of watchmaking but it with a different shape as the usual straight bridges and um of course this shape that is very unique is also represented inside the uh, tourbillon cage, which is yes. one of the details that make that watch so exciting um, because you can see this design replicated in various places. Then what we decided was to move from a, a, a very important uh, case in platinum to a light case in titanium. And then to move from white enamel to black enamel, which is extremely rare. We were counting with a, with a journalist this morning how many uh, brands are actually using uh, black enamel and uh, we uh, ended up with, uh, with five brands plus, plus two who are sometimes doing limited editions. So it's only seven brands using black enamel. This is very difficult to do. Uh, and this is one of the uh, most exclusive elements of the, uh, the design. And then you see these bridges, they have been machined and recreate honeycomb. Um, but in very small, so in, the, in a bit the same way as you would see a, a, a behave honeycomb if you were standing from two meters from it to avoid to be, uh, to be uh, uh, spiked by the bees. Yeah. And that creates <laughs> a, very nice, uh, a very nice design. A bee comb from too close is a bit heavy design. From far away, when it's just a detail like this and it's not covering the whole dial, it becomes really fascinating. And then, of course, because we had uh, all the colors were used by our two friends, uh, uh, we had only the black. So we thought, well, the only watch piece that was completely crazy sold uh, above 110,000 uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the auction only watch was a good start with using uh, the uh, uh, black ADLC on, on this very special uh, case. So we decided to use it also there and have the, uh, because this case is very close to the chrono and use that, uh, that case with a black ADLC uh, finish. Yeah. The black AD ADLC means amorphous DLC. It's, uh, it's the highest level of DLC coating. It's yeah. uh, so, so thin, it's a nano level because it's made with a plasma um, version of the DLC uh, uh, before. And it's the most resistant to uh, reaching a level of 2,000, 3,000, up to 5,000 vickers of resistance to scratches. So it's, uh, it's an incredible finish. Okay. We have, so a, we have a question uh, from uh, yeah. Fabian asking, yeah. why did you change the watch needle? I'm not sure I, I, get, uh, uh, I get the question. Yeah. No, no, not needle. It means it's uh, in French, you say aiguille. Uh, so it's uh, the hands. Okay, the okay, the hands, yeah, yeah. So, so was it an aesthetical ah, choice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hands is like the hands is like our Catholic and Protestant look. You know, we love both. <laughs> we are always, you know, you can never choose. You know, you choose, but then you ask yourself whether the other one was not interesting too. So, um, the uh, fleur de lis hands are clearly a take from the old pocket watch, uh, the thirty-four thirty. 
um, and we like to use it in more classical watches. And when we move to more modern watches, uh, like the Chrono or like this, uh, um, this uh, uh, tourbillon that is very modern, we like to use more harrow type of, uh, of hands. It, it's also a combination that is not always followed, but also usually a combination with Roman numerals and uh, fleur de lis. But don't expect that to be always true. We sometimes have fleur de lis with non-Roman numerals. So it's usually uh, when we want to have a classic feel, we go to fleur de lis. When we go want to have a more modern feel, we go to uh, um, uh, arrow-shaped hands. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it is... Uh, the effect from the dial. So funnily enough, you will turn the watch and you see how the back, the case back is more streamlined than the dial. The dial is very, um, uh, is very, uh, uh, how can I say, um, uh, very rich. And uh, also that black that you worked on the dial works interestingly with the light because it, it takes tons of gray uh, when yeah. it's exposed to natural light as well, no? This is correct. Yeah. Also, I forgot to say one thing. All the hands are made of gold. They are so thin that we need to um, sheen them out of uh, direct uh, white gold. Yeah. Now, moving on to the color, the, the ADLC is, is creating the black by uh, it, the, taking out the light, if you want. So it's not a black as a color. It's a black as light uh, elimination. Yeah. So when you have a, a, a finish that is a polish finish, you have a, a black mirror kind of look, you know, very, very black. When you have a satiné finish, uh, like on the shape here, you have a gray. And when you have a mi micro sandblasting, you have a dark gray that is a still another tone from the anthracite. So you have, yeah. you have three tones of black, which are all coming from the same, uh, the same system, the same treatment, ADLC, but that are... Uh, different because of the proper nature of the ADLC, which is uh, basically atoms of carbon that are going to be assembled using the diamond shape. That's why it's called diamond-like. Diamond, diamond -like. Like coating, graphite, yeah. Graphite is like layers, so very uh, fragile. And when you create ADLC, you, create, you get the atoms coming, bombarding the piece at a speed that it gets into creating a pyramidal shape yeah. like a diamond. Which is different from PVD, which is uh, mainly a layer, a layer of black, uh, of black powder covering a surface. Exactly. Yeah. And and PVD is really a, a more like a black paint. This is yeah. this is geometrical dimension. So yes, you can see through if you want. Uh, it's just taking off the light. Yeah, it's one of the classic of horological questions, the difference between PVD and DLC. I'm happy we got there because uh, everybody's interested in, uh, in this stuff, actually. It, Thank you, Zoli. It, it is very complex, very difficult yeah. to do ADLC. You got because a lot you, have, of... you have PVD in the dial as well, so you have a combination of the two techniques. Yeah, it, but it's, it's not exactly... Because this is done by positive coating. These guys are experts in doing... A, ALD and PVD for uh, pieces that are not in the hair, but yep. protected. They, they were working initially for uh, actually medical devices. Yep. They realized that their treatment, which is very special, could change the color. So, so they suggest, so it's a, it's a variant of classic PVD, if you want, uh, because it's a variant that can only be used in a safe environment, not in the air. The PVD yep. that people know usually is the one that is over the case and that is a very thick layer. Um, this is, if you want a different kind of uh, technique, we have to call it PVD, but it's, it's a positive coating uh, kind of treatment that is uh, very so special. So there's a lot of, a lot of craft, craftsmanship in there. And uh, because of that as well, you're keeping the numbers very limited. Now we're talking about a 10 pieces limited edition. In Absolutely. Yeah. Numbered, numbered one on 10, two on 10, three on 10. Uh, there is a, one customer who is interested by the one on ten who's still in talks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's see what will happen before the end of the week. I know a few as well. We wanted it also. We wanted it to be very, uh, very limited too. Uh, it's 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 not a game of a game of quantity. It's a game of of quality of having the right watches for the right people. I, how did you manage to keep the price as reasonable as it is? Because a ninety thousand Swiss francs X tax. 
for such a for such a piece in incorporating a tourbillon um, and uh, you show the case back as well the streamlined lines of this case back that tell a lot about the engineering of this piece uh, how did you manage that alors there is a combination of factor there are the uh, more uh, brain scientific factor i don't know if any of you have heard about the uh, the eric romer's uh, book uh, the lean startup which is about uh, software development in uh, in california and uh, i was actually teaching lean startup strategies uh, in school and i i realized we were partly doing it inside chapex so i decided to move further into that that concept so uh, applying the lean startup uh, model uh, to chapex is a way to move fast uh, correct very quickly what we're doing and not spend too much money uh, use less money on on development that will not uh, that will not uh, uh, get to uh, uh, final products yeah. Um, yeah then the second part is that we are a very small team and we are very attentive on what we spend we put all our money in the product basically we don't spend anything on what is um, yeah, on cars, on locations. The classic on... overheads, yeah. Yeah, we, we have a shop, but it's also our, our, our office for the marketing yeah. and sales team. So we try, you know, to think, you know, how can we do it to make it uh, as, as lean and as uh, well organized as possible. That's brilliant. Uh, and the, the result is a, is a timepiece that incorporates a tourbillon, off-centered indication of the time, power reserve, um, GMT indication with all the finishing we've been talking about honeycomb honeycomb patterns pvd finishing on the on the dial itself and um yeah and of course the finishing of the case which is as you said uh diamond like coated at the at the highest level so it's a great value proposal for collectors i i'm really impressed thank you uh and uh let's see now the second piece <laughs> absolutely so can we say the second piece is a preview for us xavier the preview for you would be that piece over there. But I don't know it yet. <laughs> Very good. Okay, I, I can't wait. I, I can't wait. So the there end. is a new version of the Antarctic that we're going to see yes. live and a preview in exclusively yes. for the limited edition. And now we let Xavier go through the next, uh, the next yes. piece. Pierre? Attends. Okay, let me, let me just get that. Tu peux m'amener la bise, s'il te plaît? Right. We, so, need, we need some of your... So we will start first with the with the abyss. Uh, Sorry. With, uh, Sorry, the, 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 yeah. We need some of your collaborators to switch off the Wi-Fi because the the signal is a bit blurry now, uh, and I would don't want to spoil the the view of the of the next timepiece in case. No, no, it's okay. I switched off the the Wi-Fi. I okay. think it's it's just that uh, I'm on the 4G, which is a little bit better. Okay. So maybe you, you guys remember the Orion Nebula, which was a very, very strange piece of European Orion Nebula aussi, yeah. and, uh, which was a very special piece made of varnish and representing the Orion Nebula, um, uh, uh, Orion Nebula in the, in the sky, you know, they, uh, yeah, a very it, was a, it was a teasing, it was a teasing to the launch of the Antarctic, if I exactly. remember well. Yeah. So that, that was the, that's the Orion Nebula. And uh, the Orion Nebula, uh, was actually born out of a collaboration between an artist love of that piece, which was sold out actually before. It was only a series of 10 pieces. But while we were doing the, the production yes. of that piece, the friends from Metal... It was sold out was... Before, you even, before you even mentioned it. No, yeah, we mentioned it was, it was out in the, in the New York Times. And uh, between this and that and the excitement, uh, it was only 10 pieces. So we, 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 we got this 10 pieces ordered uh, directly. Uh, then we launched uh, the, the Terra Deli, which I will show you again a little bit later. Yeah. And, and then we thought, okay, we could make another series after the Orient Nebula. We only play with tones of blue, varnish finish. So it's all handmade. They recreate the first color, then they add another color. And then the idea is uh, not mixing colors, keeping them uh, playing together. 
And that creates an effect that is random, uh, but familiar. It's very strange uh, sensation. Yeah. And we felt that so unique, never been used in, uh, in watchmaking, I believe. Um, I've not seen, uh, but sometimes, but I prefer not to say, I'm sure, because sometimes you can have surprise because you realize that someone somewhere invented it 200 years ago. But so far, we have never seen it. And this, uh, this technique that was uh, recreated by, by Metalem and this artist um, is uh, giving us the chance to create the Abyss, which is a new uh, model that we're launching uh, today. Which okay, is a very so deep, it's, it's a very deep, uh, deep blue. And uh, Fabian is asking, so because of the making of this dial, does it mean that every piece would be unique in a way? Absolutely. Every piece yeah. is unique. Every piece has a slightly different uh, design and shape as the next one. Yeah. But it's difficult because it's very ethereal. Uh, it's difficult to say, I want it like that or like that. We, we cannot let people choose. They, they know that each of them piece is going to be unique. Um, and, and, uh, and they like it because it makes it more human somehow. Yes. More, uh, of course. And it's all, it's all handcrafted. So it's when the... Uh, uh, the uh, craftswoman uh, uh, Yasmin uh, or May, when when all, one of these two are are doing the uh, the shapes, that's when they create it really, and they have to follow also the way uh, the liquid has been merging without merging together. So it's very very unique uh, effect. Very good. Yeah, we can see well. We can see well now. Uh, maybe you can point a little light as well, so we can appreciate uh, the how the dial works with the light reflections. Okay, uh, let's go outside. Yeah. Let's go outside. To Why see. not? Why not? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's crazy. Amazing. Yeah? Amazing. Amazing. So how many, how many pieces are you going to produce of this uh, particular we, dial? We are going to produce 10 and we have already three ordered. Uh, so it's le seven pieces left okay. that we are going to deliver before the end of the year. It's not fair. Uh, three are already sold before we even saw the piece. So, you know, we'll have to work very fast, I feel, on this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Orient Nebula got so many fans. We were really surprised. Yeah. Uh, so that we t told people, you know, we have another piece that is coming. And they said, okay, please, uh, please uh, book me one the next and uh, I'll, I'll confirm as soon as I see it uh, live. So, so the, we get the confirmations. And it's a three hand like the other uh, antidote yeah. we've seen so far, housing the new SXH5 in house yeah, manufacturer let's, caliber. Let, let's see the movement. Just one, one more thing about that watch is yeah. that you can choose to have a hour dots, metal dots or not. I, I, I prefer oh, yeah. this way, very pure. But if As people the really want to see, to see the dots of the hour, so 12, 1, 2, 3, then we can, we can add it as it was in the Orient Nebula. Thank you. This is a preview. Uh, this watch has never been shown before, except to the three people that have already bought it, of course. Uh, but I'm really proud. And <laughs> no, thank you, Xavier, no, for sharing this not, with us. Not, not even to them. They just, uh, yeah, they just saw a picture of the dial and they said, OK, I'm happy with it. <laughs> okay, okay, so it's a proper preview that I'm happy to share for our followers. Right. So let's go, we go in the sun. Uh, yeah. I still have over here, l'Antarctic, s'il te plaît. And we're going to see that uh, you know, and, I, and now I'm going to, re to reveal uh, something very secret. Um, so let's first start with the uh, movement. Uh, so here is an updated version of the uh, SX H5. Not yeah. Not yeah. yeah. Sure. We were talking about this caliber SX H H5 in-house development uh, that you have built in collaboration with watchmaker Dan Martinez uh, within uh, the Chapek structure. Yeah, so basically, uh, this is our first, I would say, fully in-house movement. So we have to talk a little bit what is proprietary, what is in-house. We spoke 
but I'd like to repeat it because I realize that so few people in it means. We often also ask some motorists, some people who are specialized in making movements, to make for them a movement. And this is what we have done at the beginning. So at the beginning, we have asked Jean-François Mojon from Cronode to uh, develop for us the Kedeberg movement and then to develop for us the Place Vendôme that you have seen. So these movements, they, we own them. They have been made for us, uh, but they have been made by Jean-François and his team. Then we have and they're called, they called proprietary, proprietary exactly. movements. Proprietary movements. And there are a lot of proprietary movements among very big brands that are, have also manufactured because it's a good way to do, you cannot do everything by yourself all the time. So it's a good combination. For us, it was a way to start and to learn. And then uh, we had the Chrono, which uh, is still an exclusive Chapek, it's made by Vaucher, uh, but only, only Chapek has it. And, and then we felt we need to, to Vaucher, change. Vaucher the, Florier, of course, one of the best uh, uh, movement manufacturers in, uh, in Valais de Travers and in, uh, yeah, yes. in, the, in the watch industry. And, uh, and so for these force movements, uh, we wanted to change level. We wanted to change category, change uh, division, if you want. And we wanted to do our own movement. The reason why was because of all the discussion we had, that I had with so many of the watch collectors. And I was feeling there is an area in the market that is not covered yet. And this area is of doing uh, open work, beautiful movement. And this is what we have done. So we have used uh, German silver, my sure, for the bridges to have more strength. But we have yeah. cut them as lingerie, yeah. you know, cutting them very thinly so that they can, and, and we have colored them in dark color so that they could reveal all the, the gear train um, in a beautiful way. But at the same time, so that they could resist to, shape, to shocks, okay? The, the, the bridge in the middle has six beautiful inward angles Okay, I don't know if you can see here. Yes, yes. Alors, t'approches pas trop, je vais essayer de grossir. Voilà. No. Um, and this is made in uh, steel because it's a mirror polish, polybloqué. Black mirror finish on the top. So, again, we have mixed a lot of different finish in one um, movement as a showcasing, if you want, uh, the, the best that we could do. The difference between this uh, version and the final version will be the following. Um, the uh, micro rotor is today made of 100% recycled rose gold. It yeah. will be made, made of 100% recycled platinum. So we move to rose gold from rose gold oh, yeah. to platinum. So you can play with the weight even more effectively. Exactly. Yeah. We, we, needed, we, we needed more winding power. Because this movement has a huge torque. This movement has over eight Newton uh, millimeter torque and, 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 and the inertia as of the balance is all again, again above eight also. So this, uh, this required uh, a lot of, of uh, winding power and we were a bit short with the gold. So we decided to move to platinum, uh, which is actually a, a, a chance for, for uh, entrepreneur, you know, because the gold has increased uh, tremendously in price while the platinum has not increased. So in the end, yeah. uh, it's, it's actually a smart move without willing it for the, yeah. for the, for the same reason. So yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be good financially, but it's also much better yeah. for, the, uh, for the owners uh, because this movement really has as, it's more efficient. As, a, um, as, a, as, as a sport machine. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the other so the the SXH5. So this is this is uh, this is the collection the, yeah. the, that you know uh, for the uh, Terra Deli. So the Terra Deli uh, was, if you want, uh, uh, just the collection launched after uh, the uh, Orion Nebula, and it's limited to ninety nine pieces that were sold out in in, in seventeen days. So. Uh, uh, this this model with the twelve does not exist. It's a prototype. We we keep with the two uh, two two things, um, okay. so you can see the difference between models. Okay. Now, because this 
it's made of a lame technique. So you see the, uh, the kind of uh, vertical uh, satinage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is very, very nice. That is handmade with a, with a comb. And, um, and that's uh, created by Metalem again for us. Um, and, and, and very exclusive in the execution because of the uh, uh, indexes uh, that are so strong, so uh, yeah. visible. Tell me, tell me something, uh, Xavier. Of course, this has been a big adventure, the launch of a, you know, of a new uh, steel, uh, integrated bracelet steel uh, sports watch. Uh, which was uh, obviously a brave move and went really well with a subscription that went completely uh, oversubscribed and sold out. Now, you were announcing the pieces to be delivered, and I can see now there are the pieces there on your table, uh, by October. Are, are we still on that time frame? Uh, are you confident you can, um, despite, of course, the, 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 the issues related to the COVID and um, the supply chain? Yeah, I'm, I'm confident we will start delivering a few pieces on 10-10-2020. I think the big bulk of the deliveries will take place in November uh, because we're fine-tuning the power, uh, the power, the winding power. For example, the platinum, the platinum uh, uh, micro rotors, we will receive them earliest at the end of next week. So yeah. we're, we're starting putting together, we're receiving the first, uh, the first uh, bridges right now. Uh, so it's uh, a matter of, you know, uh, ramping up uh, the manufacturing capability and at the same time uh, making sure the, the, the watch uh, works perfectly. So it's not an exact uh, scientific uh, system where we can say absolutely we will have 100% ready on 10-10-2020. Now, of course. I'm 100% sure that I will have at least one piece on 10-10-2020. On yeah. And, uh, you know, and then we will be able to deliver every single by, by the end I of think, November. Yeah. yeah. Sorry? Yeah. I think, I think, Xavier, what we've learned as well in, the, in these last weeks is that collectors are completely sympathetic with the idea of watchmaking going more and more to a form of mechanical art rather than an industrial, you know, uh, development um, kind of process and in that in that respect uh, collectors completely understand that things need time and things also change uh, you know as you go along and um, and uh, yeah there is a sort of a, a need of a patience in that in that respect if you want the lively product that you have uh, subscribed for because uh, again we only have 10 minutes now and there is a, a few questions yes. can I just throw them at you and then we see if you want to show us something else. Of course, we can do that. You, I have one last thing to show you. Go for it. Uh, which is the next collection. Uh, because because uh, the secret uh, alloy, the uh, Terra Deli collection is sold out. We've been working on a new collection that we are going to reveal uh, by the end of November. Um, but of course, we have the first prototype ready now. And, nice. Uh, I would be happy because of our long-standing friendship and relationship to, to make a, a secret preview for, uh, for the limited edition. Thank uh, you so much. So, so that's my last thing to show for you. And, and of course, we can answer the, the questions first or after as you want. Perfect. Yeah, no, you show, you show the piece. I think that's the most interesting thing. And then we go through the questions in a, snap, a snappy way at the end. Okay. So... When we started working with Adrian on the design of the watch, we had different uh, tracks uh, because you never know. A, a design is not a straight line. Design looks more like a marguerite and you, you follow ideas and you come back to the original idea because it didn't work. And then you, you find a different track and, and you work on them separately. And there was one track of a texture that was a three-dimensional texture uh, made of a shape closer to a lo Los Angeles. Los Angeles, so like... Not square, but not. Here it is. Okay, so you. Here is so here is the passage de Drake. Uh, yeah. Drake passage. Uh, so you can see that it's a texture that is three dimensional. Yeah. Even the even the logo of Chapek is in three dimension. That's thanks to the stamping. Even the little the little minutes and the hour markers at the end are three dimensional. It's yeah. a different ring. Uh, so it's made of different parts. You can recognize the uh, 
the uh, shape of the indexes uh, made for the Terra Deli, but they are shorter because there is this ring outside. Yeah. Um, and and uh, and you can see this kind of damier effect, which is not a damier because it's all made of uh, shadows and light. It's only the shape of this uh, losangel that looks like waves on the sea. That's why uh, we call this uh, this model the Passage de Drake, uh, which is a Drake's passage in between Patagonia and uh, Antarctic. Oh, nice, um, nice. So very so, much an evolution of the current yeah. Antarctic to the next uh, the next step. And it will it will. Uh, it will be uh, it will be three or four colors. Uh, there is a beautiful white uh, that is going to arrive uh, around two p.m. today. It was uh, being assembled uh, this morning by the watchmaker. You know, it's really like watchmaking seems to be well organized, but we're really working <laughs> just in time. Like crazy. The the, the four colors and. Uh, and uh, it will be, I think it will be mostly delivered 2021. Uh, so Xavier, thank you so much for this preview. I wasn't expecting it and it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I was asking you if you're gonna give rights of reservation to those that have uh, purchased the Terre d'Adélie Terre through the subscription. It's a very good idea. I didn't thought about that. Actually, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Pietro, it's because of our long-standing relationship that you see that watch. It's, it's, it's been assembled yesterday. So the team discovered it this morning. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you so, so much. So uh, I didn't thought about that idea. I think it's a very cool idea. So yeah, let's do it. Why not? That's a very good point. Thank you. So before, before we finish, uh, Xavier, three quick questions we had from our followers. So. Uh, Mongrel Nomad is asking, what are the indexes made of um, in the in the uh, Antarctic Terre de Lille? Um, most of the indexes are made normally of brass and yeah. rodiated, and in that case, it's the same. It's uh, brass and yeah. uh, rodiage, so electroplating with rodium. Yeah, very good. Uh, and uh, thank you so Sorry. much. We can Sorry only try. We can it's only really... try. I know don't know what to say, but uh, I'm I, I'm sorry for this connection. We no, not at all. Room, but... I think it's been good, and I think um, you know it's uh, it's uh, so much has come out of uh, of this. So thank you again.